Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous. And I'm Camila from Heart Behind Hustle. And today we are going to share with you, actually that's a lie, today Camila is going to share with you all of her secrets on how to create the best sales funnel ever to sell your planners. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads including planners using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. And I support female entrepreneurs and coaches and experts with their online marketing strategy so they can grow online. So if you want to check me out, it's Heart Behind Hustle TV. And I will post the link for that below. My name is Camila Gornia. I'm the founder of Heart Behind Hustle, where we support female entrepreneurs, mostly coaches, experts, and different types of online-based entrepreneurs in being able to get out there in a bigger way, grow their community, and get more sales. So we do that on heartbehindhustle.com. What's the best strategy for selling planners on their own website? Ooh, so the best strategy is to make sure. So if you're if you're selling if you're selling your planners on your website, you know you're obviously focused on driving traffic to that site. So the best strategy is to make sure that you understand where is that traffic coming from. That's number one, and the place that you're that they're landing is actually optimized as well. So does this site look legit right and it doesn't have to be the most beautiful site or anything but it has to have a lot of the crucial elements on there so it has to be a sales page what are the benefits of buying this planner what does it look like you know if someone was to actually take it and look through it how is that experience looking like because you're competing against all the other planners out there so how do you stand apart and then making sure that you're sharing you know whether people want to join your list or if you're giving them some kind of a special offer or something else make sure that there's those elements that support the sale uh, as well so those are the three key things for selling on your website great and when should people start their launch strategy for the next year so since the planners are January through December, you know, the biggest thing you need to understand is how does your audience react when it comes to your sales? So the, the, my, my recommendation is going to be different for someone that's already established, has, has built a good following and people love their planners. So if, if that's you, I mean, you could probably put it out during black Friday and you're going to be totally fine. Now, if you're newer, you need to make sure that you build that audience up a little bit. So before, you know, November, December, you know, you could, you could sell it in October and in September even, but it's, you just have to understand how your audience reacts to it. So something I, re I recommend looking at is just being really in tune with how your audience likes to buy, when do they like to buy things and who are they as well? So are they people that tend to wait until last minute or are they people that are more type A, they need to have everything planned out. So just be aware of that and also look at some of the trends in your industry and see when the other planners are potentially getting out there so you can understand when your uh, launch is going to be the best as well. Great. And then if they're doing pre-sales before the planner is actually ready to ship out, how soon could they realistically start that? So if you're looking to get pre-sales for your planner, uh, you can, I mean, again, this is going to be dependent on your audience. So as long as you already have that no like, and trust factor with your audience, you can sell it as I know people that have sold their products, like, like planners, I mean, as, as, as early as six months in advance, because it was so exciting. It was this thing that people really wanted. It was addressing a very specific pain point that people had, and they were just throwing their credit cards at this person because this amazing person was solving a specific issue. Now, if you don't really have that right now, then you want to make sure that first of all, you, you are clear on why your planner is different. What's so special about it? Why should people buy? And then from there, I mean, I would say two months, even three months is typically a pretty good time frame. Uh, again, you just want to make sure that you're making this offer really compelling for people. And I do recommend giving them something in, 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 like as their weight. So it doesn't have to be that you send them, you ship them out a planner because obviously it's not done yet, but you can give them access to something else. Maybe it's a training, maybe it's, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter what it is as long as you're holding them in that space of excitement and they still feel that connection with you as they wait for the actual planner to be shipped. Awesome. So now that they've decided when they want to do the pre-sales, 
what kind of strategy should they use and what are some added incentives that they can add? So if you are ready to actually get some pre-sales for your planner, something I recommend doing is now you have your audience, you know, I've talked about building an audience for a little while, so have your audience, or if you need to build it up a little bit, then you can obviously get some people onto your email list and you can do it with the, with the whole concept of, Hey, we have something really special that we're going to be sharing with you. You're going to see some behind the scenes and then giving people an opportunity to be one of the first that actually sign up. So an incentive could be something like, Hey, if you're one of the first 50 people to buy this planner, we're either going to give you a discount or we're going to give you um, a second planner for half off or uh, something completely different. Maybe there's other products that you also create that will support this person. So it's basically creating a really special, um, a really special bundle for people. I really am a big fan of, of creating bundles because I think that has a bigger perceived value for people and it gives them a reason to act now versus later. So again, this is going to be taken back to your specific audience. Who are you actually talking to and what did they specifically want? Maybe you can actually partner with someone else who isn't a planner. Maybe they are an author. Maybe they're a coach. Maybe they're, maybe well, it doesn't matter what they do, but maybe you could actually partner with one or a few people who are okay with sharing some of their products with, uh, that, that would be sent as a part of a bundle. So it's really, you just have to get creative with it and really understand what your audience would benefit from the most and then use that. Perfect. And let's talk about the classic sales funnel. So if the planner is the ultimate product that you want to sell, what are some tripwires, upsells, and downsells in that process? If the actual thing you want to sell is the physical planner that you're sending out, that's correct, right? Mm -hmm. If you actually want to send a, a physical product in the mail, like a planner, and that's the main core offer that you want to sell, then we want to think in, in the sense of a traditional sales funnel, we want to think about what would happen before that is the item that they buy, right? So again, going back to your audience, something that I've seen a lot of people doing is potentially creating a, um, a printable version of it. So this is something that you could share, uh, whether as a download or something like that. And that could actually be a product that you sell as well. So they could buy it for, you know, let's say that your planner is, I don't know, for the sake of this conversation, let's say it's $50, um, some badass planner. And then you have a printable version that they could buy first. And these could be for as little as, you know, five, seven, seventeen dollars. It, it, again, it depends on what's actually in there and who's your audience, right? So that can be the, the tripwire. So someone can sign up for email lists for whatever it is that you have. Maybe you have little templates for something or little sweat files for very specific things. Uh, maybe it's a nice little to-do list or maybe you have a special hack or productivity tip that you wanna share. And then the tripwire would be, hey, here's these, here are these printables that you can have for $7. They buy that and then they see, hey, actually we have this amazing physical planner that we'd love to ship to you and here's here's here it is and you can actually have them either buy it for that fifty dollars and then you know hopefully they buy you have to test it something that i've seen a lot of people doing too and it depends on the price of your product as well so not everyone's going to be able to do this is to do a free plus shipping offer so again this is more so if your planner isn't on the fifty dollar scale it's a little bit less so you basically would charge shipping uh, I mean, the, the total price point would be lower than normal than the normal if you were to ship it out. But basically, uh, you're positioning the planner as being free or really low cost. And then the only thing you're asking people to buy or pay for is the actual shipping. So it becomes like, oh my gosh, this is free planner I'm getting. Yeah, I have to pay $10, $15 for shipping, but what the heck I'm getting free planner. So especially if you're brand new and you have never sent or you've never, you know, you don't really have an audience and you want to have more of that viral potential, that is an item, that is a funnel that might actually be shared by others in a, in a lot more of an excited way because who doesn't want a free planner? right so it's just a little bit of psychology and looking at how to position it in a way that's going to be effective for people and then in terms of continuing to upsell I mean it's again it goes back to what is your business what else do you sell in your business and it could be that they could have another planner maybe for half off that could be an upsell that that's an immediate upsell maybe you have other physical products so you could potentially offer them another physical product or maybe you're a coach or you're a course creator or you're an author so you can also bundle these things together together and once they buy the planner 
here's this next step that you can take. And it has to be a logical next step too. So, I mean, the best thing for you to know is you're gonna have to do a lot of testing and see what other people are doing in your industry. What do your people specifically want that will make them be like, oh my gosh, yes, I need this. And see how your audience actually reacts to it. So it's typically not gonna work exactly perfectly the first time around, but that's, that's the nature of sales funnels. <laughs> Perfect. And then what do you say to in-person phone call sales? Do you offer them? Is that a yay or a nay for this price point or this product? I do not recommend that you sell these items on the phone. Uh, typically, anything that's on the phone, I recommend that the price point is $1,000 or $2,000. Ideally, it's more than $2,000. So anything under that, I really don't think you need to have phone call sales unless you're very, very new. But even then, you know, around $1,000, I would say it's okay. Anything under $1,000, I really don't think it's a good use of, a use of your time. So instead, I would recommend creating videos. So that way people can see it on their own terms. They can, you know, see what it's all about. Unless, of course, you're selling like some, some high-end product or some, some high-end service alongside with the planner, then obviously this, then the conversation is a little bit different. But if the only thing you're selling is a planner, I really don't think you need to be doing sales um, on the phone. Perfect. Now, how can plannerpreneurs connect with you for a custom funnel design made directly by you? Awesome. Well, if you're interested in talking about how you could sell more planners and uh, get out there and get more sales, then you can go to heartbehindhustle.com and there's a contact me page right there and you can tell me what you're looking to do and share with me everything in terms of what your planner is and all the details and then we can talk about whether this is a good fit. Thanks so much for being on. So just to recap today, Camille went over the best strategy for selling planners on your own website, when to start selling them, whether you should do pre-sales, when to start those, also how to design your funnels, your tripwires, your downsells, your upsells, whether or not to do phone call sales, and also how to get in touch with her for a custom funnel design. So thanks so much for watching. We hope you found this useful and we will see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Oh my god, look, I'm taller than you. You are? Well, I always thought I was shorter. We're the same height, I think. No, I'm taller. No. Ta look. No. I think I'm a little no. taller. Because it's. I think my hair is even bigger. No. <laughs> but we're gonna learn the best way to do that, and that's all we do.